How does a city go from a peaceful surrender to utter devastation in a matter of days? For the Persian city of Isfahan in 1387, the arrival of Tamerlane, a Turco-Mongol conqueror, one of history's most ruthless conquerors, marked the beginning of a tragedy that would end with tens of thousands dead and towers of skulls dominating the skyline. Tamerlane's conquest of Persia was methodical and relentless. By 1383, he had already subdued much of the region, targeting fragmented states weakened by internal divisions. His goal was not merely territorial expansion, but a display of power so overwhelming that it would prevent resistance elsewhere. In 1387, Tamerlane turned his attention to Isfahan, a thriving cultural and economic hub. Known for its wealth and historical significance, Isfahan was a jewel in Persia's crown, and its surrender was essential to consolidate Tamerlane's hold over the region. As his massive army approached the city, carrying with it a reputation for unmatched brutality, the leaders of Isfahan chose to submit rather than face annihilation. Tamerlane accepted their surrender and initially treated the city with apparent leniency, even appointing his own officials to govern and collect taxes. Tamerlane's demands, however, were steep. His tax collectors imposed exorbitant levies, pushing the citizens of Isfahan to the brink. Frustration turned into open rebellion when a group of citizens ambushed and killed several of Tamerlane's tax officials. This act of defiance sealed Isfahan's fate. Tamerlane, already notorious for his zero-tolerance policy towards rebellion, interpreted this as a grave insult to his authority. Without hesitation, Tamerlane mobilized his army to suppress the uprising. His forces, consisting of highly disciplined soldiers and experienced siege engineers, swiftly surrounded Isfahan. Employing tactics reminiscent of his idol Genghis Khan, Tamerlane combined overwhelming force with psychological warfare. By deploying swift, brutal assaults, he aimed to break both the spirit and the bodies of his enemies. Once Tamerlane's forces breached the city, the slaughter began. Over the course of several days, his soldiers moved systematically through Isfahan, killing indiscriminately. Men, women, and children were executed in the streets, homes, and marketplaces. The scale of the massacre was unprecedented, with contemporary accounts estimating that between 70,000 and 200,000 people were killed. Families were torn apart, and the city, once bustling with life, descended into chaos and despair. Eyewitnesses described scenes of utter carnage, streets littered with bodies, rivers running red with blood, and neighborhoods reduced to ashes. Entire districts were methodically emptied of life, leaving behind only silence and devastation. As if the massacre were not enough, Tamerlane sought to immortalize his vengeance with a grotesque architectural statement. He ordered his soldiers to collect the severed heads of the dead, amassing them into massive towers. A total of 28 such towers were constructed across the city, each containing approximately 1,500 skulls. These towers were strategically placed in visible locations, serving as both a grim warning to others and a testament to Tamerlane's ruthless authority. The construction of these towers was not merely an act of barbarism, but part of Tamerlane's calculated psychological warfare. By leaving behind such grisly monuments, he ensured that his reputation as an unstoppable and merciless force spread far beyond Isfahan, intimidating cities and rulers across Persia and beyond. Tamerlane's success at Isfahan, as in many of his campaigns, was not solely due to sheer brutality. His army was highly organized and disciplined, comprising experienced soldiers and skilled engineers capable of breaching fortified cities. His forces were known for their mobility, using swift cavalry charges and relentless assaults to overwhelm their enemies. In Isfahan, Tamerlane used this military precision to devastating effect. Once inside the city, his troops executed orders with ruthless efficiency, leaving no room for mercy or hesitation. 
The rebellion had been crushed before it could spread, and the message was clear. Defying Tamerlane was not an option.